Hi guys. Okay. First of all, I'm going to try and talk fast because this will probably be a long ish video just by the nature of the topic at hand. And also secondly, my handwriting is atrocious. So I will try and be very clear verbally on what each of this is so you can understand what it is. Um, I think the client getting process seems pretty straightforward, but for the most part, if you do not have like some skills for each area, like most people are like, oh, I just can't get clients. And I'm like, okay, but like, which part are you losing and breaking down? Like where? This is the client getting process. This is, this is it, top to bottom. I don't know anything. To, I mean, maybe there's some like little specialty, like niche things outside of here, but for the most part, 99.9% .9 of like, all the client process is in here. So let's break down each side. Um, marketing 101, most of you probably know if you've been in marketing at all, but otherwise it there is inbound marketing and there's outbound marketing. Also, fingers crossed that this video is filmed the right way and not all of my words are backwards, but inbound and outbound. Inbound, clients come to you. They, you know, they're, they mostly will get into that secondly, but outbound is you don't get them. Inbound, come to you, outbound, you don't get them. Very simple, easy peasy, you know, understanding. So those are the, oh God, those are the two forms of marketing. So, I mean, okay, marketing nerds calm down. I'm sure there's like advertising and other things, okay? But for the most part, you didn't clients, here they are. So outbound, you don't get them. So, if you are, we're going to like step by step through each one of these and talk about like where you're losing people in the process so we can kind of analyze what's happening and why. Okay, so um, here, outbound, you're getting them. I assume you have found people, you're pitching to them. If you're not even at the pitching stage yet, like none of this is for you. You need to go and start like making a list of people to pitch. Cool. Okay. So you're pitching them, right? If you are not getting a response and you are just at this level, keeping in mind, sending 10 emails is not a sample size. I'm talking about once you've hit like maybe 50 to a hundred pitches. Yes. 50 to hundred is a good enough sample size. And if you're not getting responses to your pitches, okay. Number one, do you have a damn portfolio at all. Clients really, 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 really like to see your previous work, um, testimonials, um, which is like, if you don't have that, you need to get your site together. Um, or your site kind of sucks, which we'll kind of talk about on the inbound side a little bit more, but you need to analyze your pitch. If you've hit a hundred and you're not getting, like you don't have even anyone being like, yes, let's, let's work together. There's something here. That's a problem. Something in this area before we even get to the next steps. So something in your pitching process is not right. So it's either your pitch itself. Are you talking about your entire self in it? Or are you leading with the client, their concerns, their issues, and how you solve those issues? That is the most important part. You can't, you know, like, I did pitches all the time. Like I'm a graphic designer and I'm like, I don't care. <laughs> cool. Like, how do you help me? And until, so maybe your pitch is super selfish and you need to tweak it. Most people don't care about you. They just want their problem solved. So look at that. And then look at your portfolio, which I, like I said, we'll get into, but is your portfolio kind of like turning people away? Are your samples, um, weak? <laughs> like, you know, are they, are they not like strong? Could you make them stronger? Could you fix your website up a little bit? Could you add like a picture of yourself or is your pitch too long on the other hand? You know, um, sometimes, cause I've been on both ends of like sending pitches and getting pitches and like getting pitches that are essays. Huh. I'm so sorry that your life is this whole thing and this whole story. And that's so beautiful that you like ended up in this like situation, but nobody cares. I'm so sorry. No one cares. So, um, don't write essays to people that you want. To, like I've gotten some that are like, I would say a thousand words. So don't do that. Um, 
Okay, so all that. And then the other thing to think about is, are you pitching good industries? There are a lot of industries that don't have money. Like, um, people will talk to me all the time about they want to work with schools. And I'm like, schools have no money. No money. Teachers have no money. <laughs> like, there's some, and, and don't get me wrong, Working for these kinds of industries is okay, you know, if you, if you're doing it for like your soul, um, you know, like when I take on nonprofit work, I'm very aware that I'm not going to make the same amount of money if I go to like a corporate startup, for example, right? Like, I mean, sometimes they're cheap asses too, so don't get me like, don't get me wrong there, but um, <laughs> uh, picking industries that have money is essential. Um, sometimes depending on the time of year, like in the middle of summer, you're not going to pitch water parks. I mean, maybe, you know, like I'm sure SeaWorld is spending money, fuck them, but like, you know, I saw that documentary. Uh, you know, I'm sure they're spending money all the time on marketing 24 seven, but like, you know, like pitching your local mom and pop ice cream shop in the middle of December, if you live in like a Northern state where there's like, not a good idea. Think. Think ahead of like, who has money to pay me? That doesn't mean you can't write for these industries and all these things. But if you're not getting pitches, be like, oh, am I even pitching good people to like pitch in the first place? Because that's a thing. Keep these things in mind. You know, you want to focus on industries that have money. If you care, if, if, if you just want to make like a decent living, like you can, it matters less. But like, okay, <laughs> cool. We're already at like seven minutes and I'm only at like step number two. Okay, so... And then um, the third thing is, if you're not getting responses from your pitches, are you even truly understanding their needs and clearly communicating how you solve it? Okay, so obviously most of you are copywriters. And making clear in the shortest way possible that if you, you know, like a lot of people are exhausted from writing their own newsletters, like, that's a thing. If they're a small founder, you need to tailor your pitch if it's a big company or a low company. If it's a low company, these founders are sick of writing their own newsletters. They don't want to do it. They want someone else to do it. <laughs> it's exhausting when you're a small business owner and you got to sit down and write your own damn emails or like Facebook ad copy or all these things or like update the blog or whatever it is. And uh, improving your copy also can um, match my sales completely. So then the whole inbound part, which we'll get to, is fully maximize and if you're not making that damn clear and you're just making your whole pitch about yourself and like what you need because you want money and you want to pay your bills as a freelancer no one cares <laughs> i have learned this the hard way okay so that's why i'm giving it to you the hard way so you all know okay no one cares so all right cool that stuff so if you're not getting responses to your pitches that is why one of those things or you just need to work on your actual like skill set like they go to your portfolio and they don't really like your samples. It's not strong enough, but that ties into the portfolio piece here. So anyway, that is why. Okay. So all that next, next you're getting responses, but you know, you get responses, you follow up and then like they disappear and that's like your common shtick and that's what's happening all the time. Repeatedly you get responses, but then they go away and you're not turning them into clients. Um, if that's your problem, you need to start studying some sales books. You need to start, um, sales combined with communicating urgency as a copywriter, every single day that goes by that someone has a bad site and is not making sales. Now you don't, don't be a schmuck and be like, okay, like, you know, no one likes to be pressured, but people like to have really important things done very subtle differences between the two. Okay. It's like, uh, the two, one is like the Bitcoin people who are really annoying. I think, you know, we won't get on Bitcoin. I'm sure it's fine. A lot of it, but some of we all know we've all gotten like DM DMS and Instagram from like random, like Forex and Bitcoin traders who are like, by now, oh my God, or you'll be poor forever. And the, the economy, like fear-based and like, okay, invest in index funds long-term. Very different kinds of marketing strategies. And you need to communicate the importance without stressing them out. Very subtle. This, these are all sales techniques. 
and you need to start learning from good salespeople. Like I like um, Jeffrey Gittimer, a lot of his sales books. Um, um, I don't know, just people like famous sales books and like rent the top five. Like even if they're kind of cheesy, those are things you really need to learn. If you are here, you're getting responses, but you're not converting them into like calls, fix that. That's what's happening, okay? And then the last thing is you are getting them on the phone and then they hem and haw and they don't, yeah, we'll think about it, send me a proposal, like all of this kind of gray language instead of like, okay, send me your stuff, but like, let's get going next week. Like if they're not sounding for sure, just like one day I'm just going to write a book that no one will buy. That's called copywriting is dating. Like if you're talking to someone in the date realm and you're like, hey, like we should go out Saturday. And they're like, yes, yes, we should. Here's my number, pick me up, blah. Like, that's where they should be at. Or if they're like, yeah, I don't know, let me see my schedule, like, let me see what's happening. Like, they're not that into you. <laughs> so, work on your sales skills. Sales, sales, sales is what will do that. You can be the best copywriter, but like, you need to learn on the phone or just even the written word sales language that will help them close the deal and like move on. Cool. So that is the whole outbound strategy, top to bottom on where you could be losing them and how to fix it. Okay. So, I mean, I guess I'll, I'll just turn it this way for like inbound, which uh, I'm sure is still illegible, but like, okay. Once again, inbound is where clients are coming to you. There's three ways for the most part that this happens. I'm not going to cover um, paid ads because that is a different ballpark. I mean, they all kind of fall under the same thing, but like, I don't want, I don't want to, okay. Uh, just that, just then now we're talking about like Facebook rules and now we're talking about like your ad design and like, I don't want it. Okay. So inbound. So for the most part in, when you're beginning, you're not spending money on ads, all these things, all these advanced tactics, you're just focusing on like a natural organic inbound strategy. Mm, I shouldn't include blogging in here. Okay, I'll try and remember to come to that also. Mm, we'll see. Okay, so clients come to you in one of three ways when you're beginning out for the most part. Social media, your website, or a referral. Referral is real easy. Uh, well, first of all, you have to have people in your life that you can ask to like send people your way. If you're not getting any referrals, <laughs> are you asking your clients for referrals? You should almost always end a contract with some kind of language of like, hey, if you know anyone who's like, you know, some people do real pushing, they like borderline multi-level marketing kind of advertise people to like send your three friends and you did a $50 bonus. Like, don't do that. Just like, hey, if you know people who could use X, Y, and Z or, or are struggling with these skills, just like, let me know, you know? Um, cool. Yeah. Ask. <laughs> like... And if you, like, if you're not getting past clients to, like, send you work, like, just find, like, Google, like, referral templates and use one and start. Just, just start asking. For social media, if you are not getting clients through social media, which is whatever, which is a lot of, I think a lot of newer people should focus here to, like, perfect this before they move over to here. Um... But if you're not getting people through social media at all, Gary Vaynerchuk is, I mean, Gary Vaynerchuk, uh, there's probably more people I haven't like deep dived into all, like, I know that there's just Google social media marketing strategies because that's what's going to help you there. It is a huge time suck. It is a giant suck of energy for very little return for the most part until you're like some huge profile. So like that's up to you if you want to spend all your time like building these things to like be a giant thing down the line, up to you, whatever. Um, but one common thing I see all the time that freelancers do, right? Okay, so I see, um, obviously in the copywriting realm, I see a lot of people who do um, like, They'll do like grammar tips and as a copywriter and it's like they hire you to fix their grammar. Almost every entrepreneur I've ever met has 
horrible grammar. Like eight out of ten are just high school dropouts. You know, like they're like it's not they're not taking your like comma course, Stephanie. I don't know Stephanie who does that, but like I'm just like fix it. What do your clients care about? Not like what you know. They want to make sales and make more money. And if your your content is not focused on that, and it's just on like grammar and editing and like all these other nerdy things like they don't care and that's why you're not converting clients on social media also there's a million tactics like how you did clients on twitter is a whole different ballpark than how you did them on like facebook groups and how you use instagram is a whole different ballpark than how you use so that's a very very generic like summary but you need to deep dive into social media marketing if you want to get clients on social media and so anyway that's how that's what's wrong there okay so your website you have a website you're stoked you're a brand new freelancer you need to get that website some traffic first of all if you're like here and your website is not sending you work you need to google and deep dive into web traffic strategies it is very interesting i'm not to say it's hard but it's there's a lot of crap you need to do to make a website get traffic. If you're not going to use like paid advertising, which is why a lot of people do because it just shortcuts a lot of that process, but now you're spending money to do that. So if you have a website, you need to find how to send it traffic is the stuff that you're at right now. Um, also including in that, which is like sometimes when people ask me about that, I'm like, okay, because in that realm, there is SEO, which is like very techy stuff. It's not just like, oh, for copywriters, all copywriters need to know for SEOs, like include some keywords in your writing every now and then. For true SEO professionals, you're gonna have to learn like meta tags and the back end stuff of your website and how to edit it and like not break your site like I did years ago. I took my site down because I put, a wrong comma in a code and it just like yeet and closed it out good times never again so but you need to study all of that you and if you need web traffic you have to start a blog on your site because a blog is going to send you traffic because of keywords and all these things and now you're spending this is why for just on a side tangent for people who are just trying to like make like their first one thousand dollars and get clients this right here, just social media and website alone, is a strategy that when you start like now and today and dedicating all of your time to blogging and making this and that, nah, 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 this takes six months to pay off, minimum. Google won't even let you out of the sandbox, which is their like penalty zone for a new site basically, until like month three to 10. Like it takes that long to get traffic going on a new site and social media alone takes time you don't have relationship build you've got to spend all this time uploading stories designing things upload instagram captions write them network with people follow people find your ideal client like all of that six months this one month one month and you could blaze through this and like really narrow this down and fix this and start making tons of money not tons but like you know money okay anyway Side tangent just for newbies who are always like, I have a website and I have no clients. And I'm like, all of your time here, all of it, all of it, nothing but this, nothing but this, and nothing but this, and churn and churn and churn with a little bit of this on the side, just a little bit. But most people just dive into this and they start like a Twitter profile and a website and they're like, I'm a professional and I'm like, sit. But uh, you're gonna be hungry for six months. <laughs> Like, that's cool. Like, if you've got time, you've got a job, like, dive into this. Start blogging. Like, start churning that out. Doing all that. Maybe a YouTube channel. Like, <laughs> whatever you want. Anyway, traffic is the thing that you need to study if you want to go the inbound route. Which, this is great when you get this down and it pays off long term. And you've been, like, you know, you're in a position to be ready to invest the time in here. This is immediate results. Cool. Okay, so, um, mm -hmm. okay, so, uh, referral ads, opt-in, okay, so, now we dive into your site, clients land on your site, are they, I mean, this is kind of conjoined with, like, the email list, because it's kind of, like, it depends on how you have your site up, 
for the most part, clients are not going to land on your site and hire you. Rarely, rarely. Almost everybody who pays me the like five, 10 plus contracts has been on my email list for a hot minute. They trust me. We've built a relationship. Like I suck at email marketing sometimes, which is my own fault, but like, which is how why I, I, I'm right here. Like I need the email list and like a little bit more consistent blogging. Like this is where I got this done, got these done, got that done. Like that's where I'm at. So, um, but Okay, so they land on your site. So once again, your portfolio, fix it, make it good. Your past pieces, people who can vouch for you, um, any like case studies you have, anything that just shows your experience, your work, you've been doing this a while, people like you, great, cool, put it all in. Um, so do you have an opt-in at all? If you want people on your email list, like nobody's going to sign up for your free weekly marketing tips. No one wants it. No one wants it. I don't want it. Uh, <laughs> you've got to make it like, we've all seen it. If you've been on the internet for even like 30 minutes, you've seen like sign up and get my 10 favorite recipes. If you're like, you know, a personal trainer or something like my favorite diet recipes that make you feel like you're getting a treat, but without whatever cool some kind of something a reason to opt into your list of some kind um free marketing tips not good if you want to get specific like if you were a copywriter and like my free weekly actionable steps to helping you double your client list you know like something like some kind of tangible benefit for like Okay, why am I going to give you my email address? Because all of us are absolutely maxed out on the amount of emails we can handle in a day. I'm nobody, and I get like 100 a day, and it makes me want to just die. So I am not opting in for you for email marketing tips. <laughs> this also took me a long time to figure out. I had a site for a very long time, which is why I'm like in my mocking tone, um, because I'm making fun of myself for the most part. Like... I had like, don't ever just put like, sign up for my newsletter. Nobody wants your newsletter. Nobody, nobody. Unless you're like Gwyneth Paltrow, which then she turned into goop, okay? But I don't assume Gwyneth Paltrow or somebody like that is watching my video. So let's just all assume that we do not have A-list celebrity names. So if people are coming to your site, you've solved this, you've got traffic, it's good. Um, you know, a good conversion rate is like 2%. So if you've got like a thousand people coming to your site at least uh, 20. <laughs> okay, 20. We're going with that. If my math is wrong, you know what it is, what it is. 20 people a month should be signing up for your email list. Like that should be about where you're at. And if that's not the case, then you need to fix this. Okay. So from there, you need that solid. Do you have good options to work with you? Do you have, you don't have to have packages, but you should have some kind of like hire me page with some kind of information and idea of what you can do. Now it's up to you if you want to put everything you can do. Um, Sometimes, it depends. Sometimes you may want to like test this back and forth once you've got traffic, once you've got people opting in. And if nobody's signing up for your like work with me page, then that is most likely a copywriting problem and you need to make it like more enticing to work with you and or just make it sound better. A lot of people, um, you know, like most of you are writers. So, um, a lot of people will put like, okay, Hire me. I can do copywriting, blogging, press releases, social media. No, 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 no. Like the essay is like 20 things long and it's kind of like, okay. If you want, it depends. Sometimes like you can work for a client and do a lot of things and they just like that you're a generalist writer and they're just happy to like give you everything that they need. But once you want to start charging more, you're going to have to hack off everything and really focus. People want specialists. It's why a heart doctor versus just like a general doctor usually make a lot more. Specialists 
will always make more. Yes, you serve less people. So you have to make sure, you know, you're serving the right people. So like it, so like all that group that you say no thank you to, um, the yes people have more money to give you the money to like, yay, yes. So um, that's where it's at. So if you've got traffic, you've got like people signing up for your list, but like no one's hiring you, you need to look at that deeply and your copy and your options and like, you know, don't look at mine because I'm like, booked out for a hot minute. So I don't really work on it because I'm like, I don't want anybody to fill that out right now. I am, it is a holiday season. I am writing so much copy. I, I'm dying already. So that fits that. And then, um, and once again, if they're, con if they're on your list and they're opting in and they're filling out the thing and they're contacting you and then you get on the call and they don't miss scene, sales time, sales studying, that's where, that's where you're at. So Marketing, web traffic. Um, this one's hard. You may want to ask somebody to like look at it. Please don't ask me. I'm tired. <laughs> somebody look at your pitch. Um, sales skills. Okay. And then on your email list, like I said, you know, give them a reason to opt into your email list in the first place at all. And then a good benchmark to keep in mind for this little hair is driving me crazy. Um, your email list that generally every email list is so different is very hard, but the average general rule is that you should be making a dollar or two per email subscriber a month. So, you know, if you have 500 subscribers on your email list, you should be averaging if you're good at email marketing, a, $500 a month from that list, whether that's like in clients or that's like products you're selling or whatever it is, that should be about your average, if not more, if not like a thousand, depending on your business. But that's just something to keep in mind, right? Like if you're someone, you've got web traffic, you've got people opting in, like, uh, you know, we'll just dip and go to here and you've got people like on your email list, you're emailing them, blah, blah, blah. But like, you've got like a thousand people on your email list and you're making like 50 bucks a month, like, Email marketing, go deep into email marketing, maybe even look at, we won't even get into like your entire business model and fixing it from like top to bottom. But then maybe the time to start adding in like a free ebook or like courses or all of that kind of coaching, all that kind of stuff. Now that once you've got like that all down, it's like, okay, if you're not making a dollar per subscriber on average, um, just maybe look into like email marketing or like business stuff or like things you can offer and like get creative with that. Cause I know tons of people who have like insane web traffic and like e insane email lists and they're still making like, man, I saw, was just talking to someone the other day who was like making $20 a month and they have like 2000 email subscribers. They're going for the long play and they're just building trust and that's really cool. But like, just keep in mind. So like, you know, and if they're not, if they're not getting clients, like, you know, whatever. Okay, so that was a lot, but that is the entire inbound and outbound client getting list. And if you're not getting clients, hopefully this illuminated like what you need to do and like why. I don't think I skipped anything. Cause, and also just something to keep in mind, it's not a bad idea when as you go through time as, as if there's not enough on your plate already as a freelancer <laughs> um, to keep in like track of where all your clients come from. Where are they coming from to get to you? Like even just having like a contact form here on this page, if they're, if you're finding them this way, like of how did you find me? Um, or keeping track of like how you found them, like that kind of stuff, because it can really, really help you narrow this down. Of course, if you have a website, you can kind of see where a lot of your traffic is coming from. I'm always so surprised on where my web traffic comes from. I think it's from, I mean, obviously this YouTube channel helps a ton, but like the most random just links to my site that I've ever seen. And I'm like, what? <laughs> where, where are you coming from? And then it's like, then I see the clients who are like, okay, I found you because of this like random podcast mentioned you and I'm like, who? 
the what you know just then basically my point is then it like every six months when you should be going back and really really every don't do this like every month you'll go crazy and a lot of these strategies like need to take time to pay off before you can really analyze what's wrong um but every six months you can really go into and be like oh my god i'm getting all like half of my clients from twitter that's wild so it's like okay so for the next like six months maybe you're gonna like vlog instead of like twice a week it's only like once a week and you're gonna like triple the hell down on twitter you know or something like that like whatever it is or like oh my god my hot like my highest paid clients are always through referrals always the people who give me the most money Most of the time. Okay, 50%. 50% of the people who give me the most money, the biggest deals, without having to, like, sell them hard and, like, do all this and really convince them and, like, put together a stellar proposal and they're just like, yeah, just invoice me. Like, they just want to exonate all of my spiel and just go, invoice me. Are from referrals. By and large. Because it's just like, you know, think of the people in your life and they're like, dude, you've got to try this candy bar. It's insane. Like this thing is the best thing ever. I love it so much. Oh my God, you've got to try it. Then you're at the store and you're like, damn it. Dan said that this is really good. Okay. All right. All right. I'm going to try it. You know, like referral marketing is huge. So, which is why influencer marketing is huge. And that's a whole nother strategy in and of itself. But for the most part, that is it. If you're not getting clients, hopefully I eliminated maybe potentially what's wrong. Cool. Anyway, that's it. Um, one day I'll have a cool outro. Anyway, bye guys.